We are slowly learning more about the coronavirus vaccine rollout in our state and across the country. Every Friday, we take your questions straight to the experts. Joining us now, Dr. Larry Corey with the Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center in Seattle. He helps to coordinate the vaccine response nationwide. Dr. Corey, thanks for being with us. Happy to be here, Jake. All right, first off, this Johnson & Johnson vaccine news that we're uh, working through this morning. Uh, this has to be, you know, a good sign for you. What is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? What's it going to do for our effort to try and stop the spread of the virus here? Well, we actually have a, an effective one-dose vaccine. Um, it's sort of slightly less effective than the RNA vaccines in preventing sort of a cold and a cough. But it's importantly really uh, very effective, almost essentially as effective in preventing severe disease, which is hospitalization, getting on a ventilator, um, uh, as well as mortality. And, and importantly for the world, there is some evidence that it works against these new variant strains, especially the, the nasty one uh, in, uh, at the moment in South Africa, but um, also worked uh, very well in Brazil. Do, do you see this speeding up the vaccination process, Dr. Corey? Yes, we get about 100. We contracted as a country for 100 million doses. Um, we'll start seeing that in uh, April and May. Um, uh, this vaccine is um, has a lot of uh, distribution characteristics that are, are very user friendly. It uh, doesn't need to be uh, at minus uh, 80. These liquid nitrogen kind of freezers, uh, it's way more stable. And of course, uh, it, it's a one dose vaccine. Yeah. So for many areas of the country, for rural areas and uh, our, um, era, this this really does appear to be a very useful vaccine for us. Yeah, and for remote parts of the world, too. I, I want to get to some viewer questions in just a second, but we have a lot. But I'm just curious, now that we've seen tens of millions of doses go out, are you noticing any trends or similarities in the side effects? For example, is Moderna seeing more side effects than Pfizer? What, what should we tell people? Well, the... The anaphylaxis part that had came out really early, you know, the incidence rate is dropping over time. Um, and uh, so so that's that's good news. And so uh, as far as the side effects go, I don't I really don't think that we're seeing anything uh, of major import that we didn't see in the clinical trials. OK, uh, one question here this morning from a viewer quote. I've had my first dose and am scheduled for the second soon. How do I know that they've set it aside for me or is there a chance that it won't be available for my appointment? Thanks, Doug, for sending that in. What do you think, Dr. Corey? Well, I'm sure there's going to be some people who are not going to be able to be with the Pfizer the 21 days or the 28 days. I guess my my point will be is um, if if it's uh, a week or two or three weeks later you get that second dose immunologically it's not going to make a difference. You don't have to start over um, even if it goes out for to two months. Um, it, we would like you to get as as close as you can to get the second dose and you need the second dose. Um, but the, this maldistribution issue and how we're handling it in the state and whether the places that got the got the initial vaccines as we shift focus to get it into communities more, um, you know, we may have to drive a little bit to get that second dose. I want to get to one other question here. We're short on time, but Jennifer wrote to us and asked a question I know a lot of people probably have. She says, I'm hearing that people have received the vaccine, both doses, and later go on to contract COVID. She says, are there stats on this? Have you heard anything about this, Dr. Corey? Are people who are vaccinated still getting the, the, the virus? Well, 95% uh, is not 100%. So, you know, that the, so there are... Um, you know, people who do acquire it um, uh, in, in a clinical trial. Um, uh, whether we will uh, have less efficacy when you get out in the field and there are going to be more breakthroughs than, than we think as you get further uh, along and there's a durability issue, we really don't have any evidence of that at the moment. So uh, I guess I'll just say that we are monitoring this. Uh, we are getting long-term follow-up on, on the studies that will uh, hear about in the next month and we'll, we'll find out if there is any change in durability. Yeah. Uh, anecdotally, I don't uh, see people calling me up and saying that this is the case. Okay, that's good to hear at least. Dr. Corey, thanks so much for your time. I could always keep going on, but uh, we only have so much time here in the morning. But thanks so much, Dr. Corey, with Fred right. Hodge. Always a pleasure to be with you. Yep, really. Thank you.